Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel. It's hard to believe that we finally have flying animals in Planet Zoo. The newest DLC, the Twilight Pack, adds the Egyptian fruit bat to Planet Zoo. And of course, I had to add them to Elm Hill City Zoo as soon as I was able to, so today we will build something very, very cool for those guys. But before we'll talk more about that, I would like to thank Frontier for providing me with an early access for this new Twilight Pack and the new free update. Thanks to that, I was able to showcase all of the new things, all of the new animals, the building pieces, the new foliage added to the game with the new pack. Uh, there is a link to this video somewhere on the screen and down in the description. And also, I was able to showcase everything that will be added to the game with the new update 1.0. 1.11 or 1.11 however you want to call it this video will also be down in the description and on the screen and I am sure that those two videos should be already released while you are watching this video right over here so yeah, thank you Frontier, this really means the world to me that I am able to see those animals and all of those new things a bit earlier and to record those videos for you guys to see the new things even before the official release day because this time for the first time I think uh, Frontier allowed us to uh, release the videos a day before the official premiere of the new pack so you guys are lucky because you can have a look at all of the things uh, that are added to the pack and see what we creators prepared for you uh, during the early access time. So yeah, I decided to go for a bat house and I decided to build a really cool enclosure for the Egyptian fruit bats. So the new big thing added to Planet Zoo with this new free update and DLC are the walkthrough exhibits. And of course the fruit bats live in those walkthrough exhibits that we have in here on our screen. But the walkthrough exhibit doesn't necessarily need to be a walkthrough one. Uh, you can just place the path next to the exhibit and the guests will still be able to stand there and watch the animals that are flying inside the exhibit. Uh, you just need to make sure that you will connect one end of that exhibit with the staff path so the staff will still be able to go in there and feed uh, the bats. So I decided to use that today and build a very big house for those very tiny guys. This is our new bat house in the Elm Hill City Zoo and our bat house will have an outdoor aviary and an indoor cave for uh, the bats. Of course those will be two separate enclosures but I've built them in a way that they are sort of like connected so we can imagine in our heads that the bats will be able to fly from one exhibit to another like fly simply out of the building to the outdoor aviary or fly inside and use their indoor cave. Of course the guests will be able to see both of those exhibits. The outdoor enclosure will be just visible from the path and if they would like to see the indoor one they'll have to go inside the building and there they can go through the cave so they can go inside the exhibit and see the bats for themselves from a very close distance. So this was my idea for it. I must admit that I like to make my life hard <laughs> because, you know, this uh, early access time is not a long time. I still needed to work. I still needed to, you know, handle my life. And I had to, I, I didn't have to, but I wanted to record three different videos, one showcasing the Twilight Pack, one showcasing the free update for everyone, and one building the enclosure for one of the animals and of course I really wanted to build for the bats because this is completely new for Planet Zoo and I wanted to show you guys how uh, cool you can you know uh, create those enclosures how cool you can decorate them and what you can do with those uh, and of course you know we have flying animals right now in the Elm Hill City Zoo so this is just mind-blowing and amazing I am so so beyond happy of course those are the loop animations when it comes to the bats and they're flying so I know that some people probably 
will be disappointed with that. We uh, sort of uh, expected or wanted to have like free flying animals, uh, just like in, for example, in the Jurassic World Evolution 2. But I must say that if you will add a lot of those bats in one of those enclosures, you don't seem to notice that much that they are looped animations because there are so many things going on uh, at once. Uh, those bats are really active, they are really loud, they are everywhere. You can add so many of those enrichment items for them, uh, just like you are adding uh, different things to the normal exhibits uh, in this menu, you know, on the top right. Uh, and yeah, they're really using those uh, like uh, en enrichment items. They are flying around, they are just being loud. So yeah, I really, I must say that I really like this, uh, this feature and it makes me so, so excited for uh, the things to come for potential aviaries. We will have to wait and see uh, but yeah as you guys can see you can of course uh, decorate those aviaries inside uh, you can choose the default fences I mean the default I don't know barrier of the exhibit you can have the uh, cave one or the closed one you can have the mesh you can have the uh, glass or you can do something completely yourself and this is what I went for today of course I always like to create my own stuff uh, so I decided to go for my own kind of mesh aviary but using more like an interesting style not so boxy when I was showcasing those animals in my previous video I noticed that they are not really like flying very high they are not using the entire um, enclosure so I knew that I can make it look a bit more interesting without making it taller or anything so I just made it like really maybe not super interesting but something more interesting than a box uh, so I went for this shape. I showed you how I did the, uh, the mesh on the like front wall I didn't show you the the sides because it was just so complicated a lot of copying over those pieces to match them to the size of the aviary inside we actually use something very very interesting and something that I must say I am so so in love with which is this back wall using the stalactites and stalagmites and all of that stuff this is all new this all comes with a twilight pack and you can create some crazy things with those uh, pieces I mean back walls uh, I don't know planters just as I did here they are so so versatile and I am so beyond happy with this uh, wall in the back of this enclosure also as you guys could see I added the new ivy the new ivy is really beautiful but I must say it comes in a very small pieces so you really need to work uh, to make them look like big full and so on but yeah in the end I love love this ivy because I think uh, that we never have too many of those creeping plants in the game uh, because always they make the backgrounds of the enclosure look so so much better uh, so yeah always happy to have them. After being done with this back wall and uh, doing the slightly elevated planters I went on to decorating the ground of the habitat. As you guys can see you still need to have a path inside even if you decide not to connect it so the guests are not able to go inside uh, so I went for this tree bark path because I thought that it would be easiest to blend it with the surroundings simply you can just paint the uh, ground of the habitats in some mud I don't know dirt color and then add the plants rocks and decals that are really useful for that I also added some dead trees uh, so the bats could potentially land on them of course they are not doing that uh, I must say that I don't really care if the bats are flying through those objects uh, I didn't really check it uh, I just wanted this aviary to look good and it still looks good when they are flying in there so uh, I didn't bother too much with that, that of course I didn't want to put in some massive trees or big foliage or anything because it would just really look ridiculous when they will be like flying all the time <laughs> through the big tree or something uh, but I still wanted to have some different elevations, different, you know, branches and stuff, so I added those in there. 
And that was basically it when it comes to the outdoor aviary. In a second, I will start to work on our bat house. As you guys will be able to see, I didn't include the footage of actually adding the walls because it took some time to actually, you know, plan this out. I had to be an architect for a second and, you know, plan out how the guests will be entering the uh, exhibit, where will be the backstage area, how the bats will fly for the from the indoor exhibit to the outdoor older one uh, so I there was just a bit you know too much deleting and adding there was deleting adding so I decided to cut this part out completely and you'll be able to see me uh, decorating the inside of the house and also the indoor area the indoor area was meant to be a cave so it will look totally different and the guest area will be very dark because I wanted to make it like a nocturnal house uh, so you will see that in a second I must say that this this building is very modern. So this is probably one of our newest buildings in the Elm Hill City Zoo when it comes to the entire zoo and the history of it. Uh, so we have to imagine that it was built quite recently because uh, yeah, it turned out to be pretty, pretty modern as you guys will see in a cinematics by the end of this video. But coming back to the outdoor aviary for the second, those decals that I am adding on the top of the aviary are meant to be like fallen leaves or just some dirt that is lying on it. We'll have a lot of trees around this aviary, so I decided that it will make sense to not make it like entirely clean. Uh, I always like to add those things to be slightly more realistic with my builds. As you guys can see right now, I am working on an entrance area to this building. I added a bad house sign but I will end up switching it to one of the fonts from the workshop because I thought that this was just too large so I decided to change it for a one I found on the workshop and I love love so much this is the classical minimalistic font by Christina I will add the link to the workshop down in the description so if you like to use it yourself go and click that link this is not the only blueprint I'll be using here I'll be also using the info signs by Lion, you can also download them uh, with the link down in the description. Uh, so go and give those creators some love because those creations are just, just beautiful and wonderful. For the floor in the entrance area, I am using the new uh, pieces from the Twilight Pack. To me, those pieces look just like flagstones or paving slabs, so I decided that this is perfect for using it just as a pavement. So this was what we went for. And then I'll start to work on an indoor area. You could see the entrance doors uh, magically appear in there. Uh, those are the doors that we uh, created for the Wildcat house and I just copied them over from this house in here and I think that they work just fine. The inside will be very dark as I told you guys so I added those black uh, walls inside I will also add some planters using the new wall set from the twilight pack uh, there will be the planters just to make this look a bit more like filled without them it will be like very very empty so in the cinematic shots you will be able to see that I also added those like little lamps for the plants I know that the, there are some kinds of you know lamps or bulbs that emit though this like fake uh, sunlight to you know just allow the plants to grow without any light uh, so this is what i went for in here and also i will add the info signs and those very tiny like lights i think that they are christmas lights uh, i wanted to add like stars on uh, those very black walls so i will add a lot of those tiny little lumps and uh, when they will be lit up it looks really beautiful i must say just like a regular zoo and nocturnal house and while I'll be doing all that, let's quickly talk about the new Twilight pack, about my thoughts about this pack. I must say that I really like it and I am quite surprised that I like this so much because at first when it was first announced I wasn't too excited for it. I just thought that it would be very like Halloween themed with only like mammals. But after seeing it all up close, after seeing the new building pieces, 
there are actually so so many building pieces that are very usable in you know realistic builds uh, and I must say that I really love it and I see myself using those pieces from from this pack a lot so I am very very happy about that uh, I must say because I was really expecting it's only jack-o-lanterns some crazy castle style of build and something of course there are a lot of pieces that are meant to you know create castles but you can use them in a very creative way so uh, that's always nice to see and when it comes to the animals I must say that I really like them they are really well made uh, the models are just beautifully done uh, the raccoon is really beautiful animal I love the fox I love that it has so many color variations uh, the skunk is probably my favorite animal which is quite surprising surprising to me because I thought that I wouldn't care too much about it but it is so beautiful and its babies are so adorable that just wait till you see them and a common wombat of course it's so so nice to have an animal from Australia we don't have them too many of them so and then we have the bats and I must say that when they were announced I didn't want to make my like uh, expectations too high they were announcing it of course as the walkthrough exhibit and the crucial part for me was the exhibit so I kind of suspected that the, the the bats will have the looped animations just as the exhibit animals in this game have uh, i know that many of you wanted to see free flying uh, but as i told you i i just kind of thought from the very beginning that they won't be free flying that's why maybe i'm not too disappointed and i must say that when i Firstly, saw the bats. I went inside of this enclosure. I added many of them inside, and I thought to myself, "Okay, okay, those are definitely not free flying." But look how well it is made. You really don't seem to notice at first that they are doing this looped animations because there is so so many going on, so many things going on in this uh, enclosure at once. And if we'll ever get birds, and if we'll ever, ever get smaller birds, and they will be added to those kinds of enclosures, I must say that I will be totally fine with that. Uh, that they are looped, that they are looking like this. Because for me, it's still better to have this thing than not having birds or bats in the game at all. So at least we have them now, and at least we can build some incredible stuff for them, just as I am doing it here today in this video. And I so hope that you guys enjoy what you are seeing. So let's go back to today's video. Uh, summing up, uh, I think that the Twilight pack is really, really strong and really good pack. I think it's really awesome that we have so many nice uh, building pieces. The new plants are also really, really, really fine and really nice. Uh, we have mushrooms for the first time in the game, which is amazing to see. And the animals are really, really well done. And I always like to see the smaller animals added to the game because I think that we can uh, create really cool enclosures, really detailed enclosures for the smaller animals uh, it's easier to build for them than the big ones okay so as you guys could see i sort of decorated this area for the guests i also created the doors to the airlocks that the guests will use uh, to enter and exit the walkthrough exhibit this is really important when you are entering those uh, walkthrough aviaries and walkthrough exhibits to have this airlock because if you open the door and the animal like will fly out at the same time it still gets trapped in this airlock it won't escape so it, if you are building realistic you should also always add those airlocks to those walkthrough exhibits in my in my mind I just see that in that way <laughs> uh, but if you don't want to that's perfectly fine this is still a game uh, so yeah I created just, just that and I had to do my own custom uh, custom doors and uh, as you guys could see I was using the new pieces from the Twilight pack and this new wood this new wooden pieces look really really beautiful and I know that I'll be using a lot them a lot in the future. I also created a viewing gallery, a window for the guests that, for example, would be afraid of the bats and don't want to go inside there. They'll still be able to see the bats through the window. 
And then I went on to decorate the indoor part for the bats. Uh, I wanted to like build sort of like a cave, so I used the same uh, back wall that I used in the outdoor aviary. And I also will be using a lot of those stalagmites and stalactites, I really love those pieces. And then here I also wanted to have some foliage, but I knew that they it wouldn't grow. I'll put some on the walls, uh, you can imagine that this is a fake, like something fake, but also I'll put a lot of dry and dead like foliage, uh, so it could be just, you know, put there and it dried out and it stayed there and it looks really cool because uh, also when I was in the nocturnal house in Zoo Berlin, I saw so many of those, you know, dried out grasses in those enclosures. Uh, so they were, still added, they were still adding some foliage for those animals, but it wasn't alive. <laughs> uh, so this is what I was going for today. Okay, and now I would like to give you guys some fun facts about the Egyptian fruit bats. The Egyptian fruit bat is highly social species, usually living in colonies with thousands of other bats. They are some of the only fruit bats to use the echolocation, though a more primitive version than used by bats in other families. They have developed a socially complex vocalization system to communicate with each other. They consume a variety of fruits depending on season. Uh, because of its consumption of commercially grown fruits, the Egyptian fruit bat is considered a pest by farmers. It also acts as a pollinator and seed dispenser for many species of trees and other plants. The Egyptian fruit bat is considered a medium-sized megabat. Its average wingspan is 60 cm. Males are larger than females and can be easily distinguished by the large scrotums and the prominent stiff stands on hair around the their throats. The Egyptian fruit bat usually makes multiple short flights from its roost to various fruiting trees. It prefers to pick fruits and carry it back to the roost or another tree before eating it. So it's so cute, it chooses its fruit and takes it back to its home and eats it. And they are found of course in Africa, but also in the Middle East and the Mediterranean. For example, there is a large colony on a Cyprus island. Okay, this is all when it comes to the fun facts for the Egyptian fruit bat. Let's go back to the video before it ends. So as you guys could see, I officially finished the cave for the bats. I also added some of the stalactites hanging down from the ceiling. And the whole building inside is basically finished. I also did the backstage area off camera, so you will be able to see that in the cinematic shots by the end of this video. As you guys can see, we are now working on a facade of the building. Building. So we are making it look a bit more uh, interesting because right now it looks like a huge bunker. This building doesn't have any windows because obviously I wanted to make it dark. So it looks a bit weird. That's why I decided to make something more with uh, the facade to make it look a bit more interesting. And I think that the new wooden pieces from the Twilight Pack just work perfectly. I love the texture of this new wood, I must say, so I really wanted to use that. And also I will add many different details to uh, this building, as you guys will see. I added some concrete at the, uh, like, bottom of the wall because, you know, the wood in there would get quickly like destroyed by water and dirt and so on so I decided to do that and I added also some of those metal pieces just to make it look a bit more interesting. At the top of the walls I will add the blinds that are meant to be hiding the ugly stuff that is on the roof. I mean we'll add some uh, ventilation system, some AC and stuff like that so this is used to hide those stuff. And also you'll be able to see me adding a uh, custom fence to prevent to get the guests from getting too close to the aviary. Uh, this is the fence that I created for the Przewalski horse habitat so water for a silco moment. This is is the last animal that I've built for during the early access stage of the previous DLC. 
And this is basically it. Of course, I will add some more details uh, and you'll be able to see it all in the cinematics by the end of this video. So stay tuned not to miss anything. I hope you guys will like this house. Uh, I think that I'll be able to add it to the workshop, but I'm not able to add it right now because the pack is not officially released. I will do it when the, uh, it will be simply released so you guys will be able to use it. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel. Uh, we are almost at 11,000 subscribers, so your subscribe will mean a world to me. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, comment down below what are your thoughts about the bats and this building. If you'd like to support my channel a little bit extra, you can do it with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!